All right, everyone. So I have made it to the Nuclear Science Museum in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I have been wanting to come here only because with my job in the military, I worked on the nukes. I worked on ICBMs, installed them in their uh, silos and everything. And I always thought that this would be pretty cool to come and see. So now that I'm down here, I wanted to come check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff here about nuclear science and the uh, Manhattan Project and a lot of nuclear weapons. So. I thought it'd be pretty cool. I'll roam through and kind of give you a little uh, tour of what I'm seeing, but I'm kind of excited. It's the uh, it's definitely the nerd in me, so we'll go check it out from here. All right, let's go. So this is really cool. These are exact castings and replicas of Little Boy and Fat Man. The bomb dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These things were pretty crazy. This one was 13 kilotons of TNT equivalent, so 13,000 tons of TNT. And that's just really cool to actually see what that bomb looked like. But that was nothing compared to Fat Man here. Fat Man was dropped on Nagasaki and this one was 20 kilotons. see how uh, how big this thing is uh, just compared to me this was loaded up b29 and dropped it's crazy to see these things up close I mean I know they're not the real ones but no, obviously they're not the real ones that was stupid to say but whatever cool casting so let's uh continue on and check out what other stuff we got here today. So designed at Los Alamos nuclear test uh, research facility, this was the gadget. This was the original nuclear bomb at the uh, Trinity test site. This is kind of where it all started. This is what they first made to actually uh, to detonate. I didn't even know if it was going to be possible or not, but this is the culmination of all the work that all the scientists did in putting together for the Trinity test site. Also known as the gadget. See what other cool stuff they have. Behind me here is what's known as the Mark 23 nuclear warhead. This was used by the Navy. It was a 16-inch projectile. It was the only one that was actually developed for their 16-inch uh, their cannons that they had on their ships. Just to think that uh, yeah. nuclear warhead right there could be used on a ship, anything. The next thing is this little guy here. If you've never seen about this little guy, don't worry about that little guy. That little guy is also known as the Davy Crockett. Now, the Davy Crockett was shortly fielded by the army um, until they realized it. What the hell were we thinking, giving the uh, ar army sergeants uh, control of a nuclear weapon out on the battlefield? And it's like, give me that. They just took that away. So. But it was there. Let's see. About one, one ton, one kiloton yield. Yeah, <laughs> not to think they were just gonna be carrying around that out in the battlefield is crazy. So, alrighty. Well, let's keep going. Ooh, I think I know what this one is. Special Atomics Demolition Munition. Now, I actually just watched a video on this. This was actually, quote, a man portable nuclear weapon it could be set it had an analog timer on it and the idea was to deny entry by foreign forces to block an area make it so irradiated and detonate so w54 nuclear warhead it or sorry this is the yeah, and the h92 so 
pretty crazy stuff. All right, let's keep going. Behind me here is the B-29 Super Fortress, one of the exact planes that dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Man, can you imagine what it would have been like to be on one of these here? That would have been pretty cool. Look at how big those engines are. And here, you can see the replica of Fat Man back there for size comparison. Walk underneath the wing here. That's another thing that I used to love to do. A lot of other people don't know I'm a pilot as well, so I'm a aviation buff as well. But yeah, so you can see here the size comparison to a fat man to the actual plane. That is pretty cool. So we'll continue on here. Keep exploring around. There's a lot of stuff here, so let's go check it out. Behind me here is a replica of the 100-foot tower that the gadget at the Trinity Set test site was used. This one's only 80 feet tall, but still, it's a otherwise pretty much exact replica of it. You can see the gadget hanging up in there. It would have been hoisted all the way up to the top there, and that's where it would have been detonated and ushered in the atomic age. Because, uh, well, once nuclear weapons were invented, they could never be uninvented. So now they're here to stay whether you like them or not, unfortunately. But the history associated with this is really cool. Now, the Los Alamos test site where all this stuff was actually created is actually close by, but you can only visit it, uh, I think about twice a year, first week of October and first week of April, I believe, don't quote me. But uh, they can actually take you out to ground zero and you can go check it out. One day, I think that'd be pretty cool if I could check that out, so. But they've still got some more neat stuff here. I'm gonna go around and show you a few of the things, and then uh, we'll head back inside. Now here is quite the treat. It is the 280 millimeter atomic cannon used by the Army. And a lot of people recognize this picture and uh, the associated video with it. And behind it, we have the cannon itself. How cool is this? You've seen the video of this thing launching a nuclear weapon seven miles at the Nevada test site. And here it is. Now you gotta admit, this, this is pretty cool. Look at this thing. It was just a nuclear cannon, you know, back in the day when everything was trying to be nuclear at some point. But I've always seen the video on this, and this, this is so cool. It's a lot bigger than what I thought it would be. <laughs> that's what she said. No, that's not what she said. I'm pretty small. Yeah. This is pretty cool. All right. Well, let's keep going. We've seen the nuclear cannon, and then we're off to see the next thing. Here we have the Mark 53 and the Mark 17. Now, the interesting thing about these guys is that these are thermonuclear warheads, so they're a little bit different. Instead of just having a, um, a fission reaction, they actually have caused a uh, fusion reaction. They would use a fission reaction, so a normal atomic bomb, to activate the um, fusion to detonate, and it was massively bigger, like scales bigger. These were the megaton range. These are, uh, yeah some pretty decent replicas of them but yeah these things were big and they were air deliverable unlike your mom <laughs> here
here we have four examples of nuclear cruise missiles just to give kind of a a size comparison but yeah this, this place is really cool I know it's like the uh, the nerd in me that's uh that's kind of geeking out over this stuff but man is this stuff cool but yeah up here I think we have some intercontinental ballistic missiles so let's go check those out and see what we can find there's a lot of cool stuff here guys Wow all right let's keep going all right guys, now this is super cool. If you remember in the last video that I posted of the Quebec One nuclear launch facility, this right here is the exact missile that they would launch. This is known as the Peacekeeper, the LGM-11BA. We used to call this a nuclear holocaust in the bottle because this entire cone right here could house up to 10 Mark 21 reentry vehicles. This whole thing weighed 195,000 pounds with a range greater than 6,000 miles. Now, this was not the missile that I installed. I would install I would install the um the Minuteman 3. That's what I worked on, which is the newer version. This missile is actually going out of uh, or was being decommissioned as I came into the Air Force um, so yeah but the silo that we were at last video this is the missile that they would launch and you can see just how huge this thing is god there's so many of your mom jokes in this one and that's what she said jokes it's so big nozzles that would uh, extend out on separation Yeah, these, uh, these stages were pretty big. Each one had to be installed separately, each section. Unlike the Minuteman, the Minuteman 3 missile can actually be installed in one big go, all three down stages together. The Peacekeeper, not so much. This one had to be installed in separate stages. And I got a couple friends that are still air forces out there that used to work on these things so yeah pretty cool stuff all right well let's keep going i think there's still a few more things here that i want to show you and we'll go from there This one is the Titan II ICBM. This one was an absolute workhorse of the Cold War. It's even bigger than the Peacekeeper, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. That missile was huge. One of the things that I always thought was pretty unique about this one though, is it's dual engine configuration, how it didn't have like three or four that would make it, uh, I don't know, would have made, possibly make it more stable, but I don't know. I am not a rocket scientist. Look at that. Look up in there. You can actually see where all the fuel came out. Look at these. Look at the twin turbos on these rockets. Yeah. Okay, that's the final uh, nerd joke for you, I promise. Eh, not really. It, that'll still continue. I'm, I'm horrible with the nerd and dad joke, so. All right, a few more things. Let's keep going. Here we have the B-47 Stratojet. Now this was also a uh, behemoth of a plane. I think it was a one or two seater. I, I don't know, it looks like a two seater. Um, but yeah, huge plane, it's got six engines, three on each side. This was absolutely nuclear capable and used during the Cold War. I 
gotta say guys this is pretty cool the nerd in me is really uh geeking out about this type of stuff there's a lot of stuff here today we got the icbms behind me b47 b52 b29 then you also got the tower you got a lot of stuff here and i'm just perusing and checking it all out When it comes to submarines, I don't know much. When it comes to submarines, the actually pretty much only thing that I know is that the ice BMs that we do currently have would be a complete retaliatory defensive strike. They would not be offensive at all. Everyone knows where they're at. They're completely hardened. We've got way too many of them. That would be part of the mutually assured destruction um, system that we have. That if anyone fires anything at us, we're going to fire everything back at them. Now the subs, that's another story. The subs would definitely be first strike. They're always floating around out there under the water. You got plausible deniability. Set everything off. Launch. Come out. Go down. And you're good to go. All right, well, we'll continue on back inside. It is still cold out here. The weather's not the greatest today, but still a lot better than where I came from. So, all right. You obviously can't come to the nuclear science museum without checking out the DeLorean and the flux capacitor because 1.21 gigawatts that's why so one area that a lot of people forget to talk about or an interesting point that we kind of miss is what to do with all the atomic waste and radioactive materials byproducts from building either weapons reactors and like that that's where these things come in. True Pack 2s. These are containers that are used to ship drums that have been packed with radioactive waste and equipment. And this is how we get them to WIP sites. W-I-P-P. -P, waste uh, intervention, or was it, let me make sure. Waste pilot point. Yeah. Hmm. Here you can see some drums and what would be in them. Cool. Just some more neat and interesting things. I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, quick little tour of the Atomic uh, Science and Energy Museum here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It is, it's pretty cool. I'm very glad I decided to come here. There have been a lot of neat and interesting items that you can check out and see wherever. So if you guys haven't been here, make sure to check it out, Google it. It's a pretty cool place. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour. I hope you liked everything that we saw and everything that they had here. So. I will talk to you on our next adventure, wherever that may be.